what is happening guys i want to go over the closer feedback system today um so i suppose this comes from a place whereby when i was in my early days of selling i really i was selling for multiple gyms across the uk and i was uh i'd start a new gym and i'd get a complete another set of objections and i was like wow it's almost as like different parts of the uk had different objections and i'd have to i'm actually in a place called the mac theater right now and i've been going to this place for years because it's got a great atmosphere ambiance for doing constructive work and i would take my saturday mornings off and i would come down here and i would just like how the hell do i get around these objections because these are complete new ones that i've not heard before like i'd be selling for a gym in kent and like I could pretty much guarantee I'd get like three types of objections and then I'd go to another place in Bristol and it was completely different. It was so weird. I know this that's just me sort of put my own perspective over things. But anyway, the case in point is that you need to optimize your game. And I can wholeheartedly say is like when you actually take the time to hold to optimize your game in the process that I'm going to be explaining now, then you'll make more money because people run out of shit to say. All right, people run out of excuses, all right? And you just just keep knocking on the door and you look at tactical ways of um, just getting over like their, what's called like their heuristics, their heuristic patterns of behavior, whereby they're just, you know, they're using things like time, they're using things like a deferral of authority to others, um, you know, not being able to get over their own fear and things like that. That's, it's, we're human beings at the end of the day, there's going to be certain outliers, but basically there's just going to be fundamental things that people say to make, to get themselves out of a spot so they don't have to change, all right? As you as you, as you you evolve. I could be sort of preaching as a converted. Um, a lot of you guys might already know that, but to other people like who kind of just like new to the game, you know, you just start to see patterns after a while, and the patterns have just got slightly different verbiage around them. But at the end of the day, it's just people trying to get out of their own way Obviously, you're not selling snake oil if you are selling snake oil and don't sell something else. But if you're selling something that's meaningful, well-priced and affordable um, to people who can afford it and it's going to benefit them and get them to the next level, then you're in the right spot. And, you know, you should be optimizing your game in order to help and serve them, right? Okay, so that's a, that's the reason that I did it. It's like I've got first-hand value and experience in actually doing this. And what I tend to find find then is like when I tr transcend when I went from um, like front 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 of house coach uh, front of house uh, rep into like coaching, I used to find that um, people just really used to focus on the things, the sexy stuff, the fluff, that you know the objection handling, the big the big dog stuff, you know, like the fancy stuff, which sounds really good, but it's not going to make them more money. Okay, so you really want to be focusing on the stuff that's actually like the weak part, like what's the weakest part of your chain? Like if you're not getting qualified people into your calendar, then like you can objection handle all you want, but they're just a bad fit for the program. So you need to ask yourself, like, what am I doing that's just broken at the front end? And you're going to get far more value from that time than you are um, from practicing the sexy ninja stuff at the back end of the call, which you may be yet to use like once in a blue moon because your front end's broken, right? Okay, so like what are the things that I'm gonna be focusing on in this training, prospecting, discovery, objection handling, and mindset, okay? This isn't a big training, it's like 11 pages. Um, so like what you'll find is that the prospecting and discovering objection handling they form at like a daily and weekly cadence and they're very much fairly generic okay although there's subtle differences that i will be covering okay and then in terms of mindset um it's just quite a distinct really simple mindset and if you can grasp it then it'll just pay dividends in terms of like like because what we tend to do is a lot of the time when we're in a you know discovery of a of a high level skill, we're pretty much a, our own worst enemy, okay? Because we we incorporate too much blame and things outside of our control. On the inner monologue, we say to ourselves, we drag ourselves over hot coals, okay? And it's just we just add too much emotion to a process, which I'll cover in a wee bit, okay?
Okay, so what are the different phases uh, or the, the different areas, should I say? Um, to the close of feedback system, it comes down to prospect and discovery, objection handling, the mental game. And essentially, there's a feedback loop for all of these three. All right. Okay, so as a, as a caveat, you need to know your numbers, guys. If you if you don't know like how many dials you're making, how many people are picking up, how many people are, you know, kind of converting into like pushing through into like a triage or a sales call, how many people you're converting on a sales call, things like that, you need to just at least have a rudimentary track or better still use a CRM because as you get better and as you scale, go to different accounts and things like that, you're going to be need to be familiar with the CRM if you haven't used one before. All right. So as I discussed, the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Like, don't focus on shit that you don't need right now. It's like a massive uh, thing that, you know, we kind of find within Sales Sniper is that, um, you know, people just coming in, you know, maybe they've gone through the Dan Lock school of brainwashing or something like that, and they just they just want to be like a high-ticket closer, man. We come in and they're doing like a fairly, like a very important job at the front end, such as setting or something like that, and they just want to use the wizard stuff like they might have heard off a podcast or something like that. And it's just like, and that, that is honestly a lot of the time. I'm not just saying that to be facetious or prove a point. Like so many people just focus on the wrong shit. Um, so you really need to have like a cold, hard evaluation of like what's the lowest hanging fruit for you right now to fix in and don't avoid the hard stuff. If, if you are hard, avoiding the hard stuff, it's, it's an easy loop. It's like in a gym. It's like when you, I don't know if you, you know, you guys, you know, probably had some experience with the gym goers or you've been to a gym in the past. You see that guy cutting about with a massive set of shoulders and chest and then he's got little chicken legs. All right. That is the perfect example of avoiding the hard stuff. Doesn't want to squat because it hurts. Can wear a loose pair of trousers. But then, like, what is what is the end, net result of that? No bueno, all right. OK, so prospecting first. Okay, it's just like any other process. Okay, it's not pers when people slam the phone down you like eight times out of ten, you can get them to do it less and less and less by the things you say and the way that you say it. Okay, and what we're going to do is like we need to create a feedback system so you're ever optimizing because every now and again you're going to come up with what I call like a golden stallion like uh, call where you just go right under the gatekeeper. You have a great conversation. You get somebody booked in for a further call, right? And what you need to do is you need to record that. You need to pick the gold out of it. Okay, and that what that means, like, over time, you're able to replicate good and, you know, get rid of what's not good. And as a result, your process improves, all right? Okay, so what does that actually look like? So, like, I would subscribe to Lucidchart. Okay, um, you get a couple of free ones, uh, free charts at the start. Uh, but to be honest with you, like the the way that they've built it in, like you just you end up having to buy upgrades, cost like I think twelve dollars a month, something like that. But I really find it very beneficial, right? So how does it work, guys? So you're gonna have like a warm response. This is just me kind of spitballing here. Warm response, neutral response, cold response. Warm response, 30 second commercial, if you know what that is. Like, you know how nowadays a lot of people struggle with um, the, the price of energy bills. Um, so, what we do is we, we help them take control of their life and their expand, uh, they take control of those bills. And um, so they're not a slave to the energy producers with the use of, um, you know, solar panels. Um, um, at, at, at a, so that they actually end up paying less and, take, and they're, they're never. Uh, they can actually avoid inflation and save like tens of thousands of over the next couple of decades. All right. So obviously that's like a solar, very simple sort of 30 second pitch, but um, that's what I mean. Okay. So the point of my mean guys is that like you're going to be thinking, you're going to have this in front of you, say, for example, if you're on the phone and like somebody says, mm, yeah, kind of what are you guys all about? 30 second commercial. Then this is going to, this is going to, then they say, no, I'm not interested. So you can have like cold response, warm response. So what you have is like a spider web almost of responses. And that's what it's doing. It's allowing you to push, push, push further through the conversation. 
And before you know it, like you're having loads and loads of really fruitful conversations because you know exactly how to get under what I call like their heuristic. Now, heuristic, if you look at Cialdini, you know, what a book. Yeah, it's like the, the Bible of sales, yeah. Uh, it's called Influence. And he says like heuristics are just like subconscious patterns of behavior. So that person doesn't hate you. That person doesn't know that you're of value to them yet. And they, they don't, because they're not, because they, they don't perceive you of value. They just give you the flick off. And as a result of that, you need to get under these heuristics. Don't take it personally, yeah? Okay, so what's the process? You record your calls. Have a debrief after your calls and think to yourself, what went well, what went shit? Evernote is good for this because it's like a central hub. Scratching it down on a piece of paper it just becomes, you leave yourself open to losing the paper and not understanding what you've written and things like that, okay, which can uh, be of detriment to your process. Like, ask yourself step three, like, is this is this something that is really holding me back? If so, take time out of your day, take, take a scratch pad over your lunch break or no show and say, like, how can I fix that? Put a band-aid over that now, okay? Uh, if it's not, if it's like, you know, okay, so I need just time to work on that with like a peer uh, or like a coach. Okay, then what you can do then is you can just record it in Evernote as like, you know, this is from like my weekly switch. Okay, and then just go to every couple of days, every, like maybe twice a week or something like that. Work with your coach or work with your peer review group and say, look, I'm keep getting this on the call. Like, what can we say? What can we do to change it? And don't have an ego regards your feedback. Okay, like just say... Just treat it as simply as a pro as a process. If somebody says, "Look, you know, can I share a perspective?" You just sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Uzi nine millimeter jobby when you when you're prospecting. You need to get up. You need to be more animated. Um, you know, you need to start waving your head and your hands around. So, so you become like the tonality improves. Like, just take it on the chin, all right? So, it, the people you work with are out there to support you. If they're not, they wouldn't be there with you. Okay. Okay, and the last approach then, like I touched on at the start of uh, this presentation, was just take time out during your week, okay, and actually just like change like one to three things. Like what's the one to, th what is the one to three biggest things I can change this week to move the needle for me? All right, take some time out, cup of coffee, go down your local coffee shop, change them. Really let them bed into your system and just take time out. Like Saturday afternoon, Sunday, if you work Monday, Friday, is just time for you just to take just to take the gas off, let your subconscious get used to the new way of doing things and move on. All right, okay. So that's a fair. That's like a like a like a like a five step plan there. So just to just to create like that feedback loop for you, okay. And of course, you're using the Lucid chart as like the the basic document for making the the amendments. Then you've got like the discovery phase. I guess most of you using NEPQ. If you're not, guys, like I would really strongly start and recommend start using it. Reason is because it's the only sales model I know where it's just like the complete model. You can just optimize, optimize, optimize for any industry, just get better. It just gives you um, such versatility and such a like a, a malleable platform to work on. So step one, record your calls. Okay, have the discipline to make a five-minute debrief because, yes, you might be doing back-to-backs, all right? But you just want to maybe send a voice note to yourself. Yeah? Um, that call was okay, but I just got to think about it, partner. I got to think about it, objection. It's a partner objection again. I need to chase that up the stream. All right? Um, and then just label the call. That was call with Fred Banks at 12 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, think about it, partner. Okay, and... You know, you can say, so just be organized, guys, because you're just missing valuable gold if you've not got the systems in place to really pick up on what your deficits are, okay? I use the analogy, right, that your um, effectiveness as a closer is imagine, so imagine carrying a bucket the length of a room, all right? You know, it's always going to be holes in the bucket. Imagine the bucket's full of water. Now, somebody starting off in the game of sales is going to have 20 holes in their bucket. And by the time they get to the end of the, the, the next, by the end of the room, they're going to have very little water in their bucket, right? Now, the better and better you get at sales, the more you just plug those holes. And then that water in your bucket is how much you get paid, right? So you're never going to have like a bucket without holes because not everybody's going to buy. 
But the more holes that you plug, the more money, the more water you're going to have at the end of the month. And that's just the way it is. So think about like just having this feedback system as a way of making more money by plugging those holes, all right? Okay, so it's the same process, step three as before. Like, is there something that's absolutely causing carnage in my um, in my script? If so, put a Band-Aid over it. Okay, step four is record like what's not going right and take it to your peer group or your coach. Okay, and make those amendments. And step five is like, ask, like you've got a compilation of stuff that's really sort of burning you up and stuff that you've taken to your coaches. Now, at the end of the week, it's like, what's the one to three things that I can make a change? All right, two to my script so that I don't don't um, so that I move them the needle that little bit every week. Okay, key note here: don't make wholesale changes because you're just not going to know where you are. Just slow and steady. Okay, um, and I just want to make another point here, guys, and this is the whole thread of it: is this process is only as good as the consistency and focus you give it. All right, the extra work that you give it now, because it is extra work, because no one's paying you to do these things. All right, but you should have the self-discipline to realize that it's the hard work that you do now that's going to pay dividends. The more buck, buck, uh, more holes in your bucket that you close now, that you, um, that you actually make more water at the end of the month. All right, so we're all sales professionals. That's where we need to go with it. But the next thing, guys, is uh, objection handling. Similar to the matrices from loose, use, um, from the prospecting, we'd use Lucid Chart. Now, these are a lot more comprehensive, okay, because there's going to be different objection handling. There's going to be things like this one's for fear. And then, they, like, I've actually worked with, like, specific B2B accounts and um, or any account, loads of different accounts, really, and we've actually designed them, okay? So, like, you'll be able to zoom in. This document will be available. I'm not going to bore you with all the gory details. But, and also, the, these these objection handlings are going to be part of the portal as well, but they're also part of my book, The Closes Radar, if you've come across this document as not part of the portal, which you shouldn't have, but that's life if you do. Um, all right. So you're going to form these, make, like these almost like flows where people say certain things, you take them to the next level, you have rebuttals in place and things like that. So, like, you want to keep this live, again, so you just want to have a place whereby, you you know, you, if you have, like, a golden stallion where you overcome somebody's objection, you want to have it recorded. Okay, so record your calls. Give yourself a debrief. I keep getting this partner objection. What's this all about? Don't forget, like, partners just doesn't mean that they're partners. You're getting, like, it's very, I guess in some industries, you will get more partners than others. But you need to just really sort of diagnose where this is coming from. But generally, it's a lot, it's a trust thing uh, that they just that they're not compelled. Oh, some other reason that they're not compelled to make a decision there and then. Okay, um, that's obviously a very high level assumption there, but you know what I mean. Okay, so just say like I keep getting this partner. I don't think it was partner genuine. I think it was partner logistical. I think it was uh, partner smokescreen. Okay, and then just take it to your coaching team. Uh, take it to your coach or your peer review team every uh every week okay and just remedy it and if it's a change that you can make there and then do it but very mindful again with your scripting or your objection handling um if you're just making wholesale changes all the time you're going to crack yourself up all right and then step five is like what are the three amendments one to three amendments i can make each week all right so it's not rocket science Okay, so like what does that look like every week be prospecting some people obviously don't do prospecting some people don't do discovery because they might just be doing prospecting i don't know um but you're not going to focus on them all but obviously whichever ones are necessary for your job that's just like a basic uh, bullet point list of what you should be doing all right so um it just breaks down the cadence Record five minute debrief after each call, uh, daily, make immediate changes, multiple time weekly, go to your peer review or coach, all right, or weekly, like one to three changes, nothing massive. It's okay, so the prospecting matrix, that's such a suggested deployment. You can have it in front of you guys. I don't know anybody yet who's prospecting over Zoom, so you're just going to have it in front of you. If you're prospecting face-to-face, -face, you're going to have to know it, learn it by heart, okay? But that's good. 
because at the end of the day, it's just going to make you super, super dialed in. Discovery script. Um, even if you're over Zoom, or even if you're over the phone, I'd recommend that you learn it. All right, you can have it in front of you, but like just bullet points. All right. Um, Face-to-face -face encounters, obviously, you're going to have to know off by heart. And then objection handling. Over the phone, have, the, have it in tabs in front of you. Over Zoom, just have your head at a certain angle so they can't see it, that you're reading off the screen. I actually have the camera at 45 degrees angle, so it looks like a podcast. That's a wee tip for you guys. Really, really good tip. And then they can't really see that you're, you're going through the objection handling, but know your objection handling. All right. Okay, like I said, the Closers Radar book has, and this portal has the objection handling flows, so you're going to get access to those. Okay, suggested weekly cadence, learning of scripting. Okay, so you you can't just expect, um, you know, yourself to to know things off by heart after reading it once or twice. All right. So with the the prospect in Matrix, what I would literally do, especially if you're part of a team. It's just practice it in a huddle daily. Or if you're on your own, create like an audio video recording and run through it each morning. So you've got it in front of you. So you're that much sharper. Okay. Some Like as you get better, just be real with yourself. Do I really need to do it, uh, you know, every day? Or can I do it like four times a week, three times a week, twice a week, once a week? Okay. In relation to like the discovery phase, same detail. Make an audio recording, run through it each morning before the day starts. Commit to like one recital daily and dress it back four, three, two, one, as you just get better. Like if you're just doing loads and loads of calls every day, you're going to be hot, okay? Um, but if you're doing like two or three calls a week, you need to stay hot by doing the repetition. Like re reviewing your ma uh, your matrix for objection handling. Again, even now I'm not objection handling really. I'm just coaching. I, I do it two weekly, twice weekly. Just record it watch it and then um but if you if you feel like you know you're just getting battered daily with objection handling you might need to re recite it daily okay make it the forefront of your activity right so a key note here guys is just don't go through the motions with this learning make sure that you're actually just stopping putting yourself in quietude and actually learning okay rather uh, like and ask yourself is this actually going in if not slow down and focus so like, you know, like I'm all about time optimization. What I do is I just do my stretching as I'm watching it. So I'm double handling, but the stretching is obviously passive, which means it's not like my mind's not being occupied on other stuff. Okay, so the last point I wanted to touch on is um, is mindset. So as I touched, talked about, like it's just not super complicated, but it's super effective. Okay, and that is um, Instead of like just listen to your inner monologue, instead of using a needle such as I'm a good closer, I'm a bad closer, I should close more, you know, I should close more deals. All you're really doing is create an impossible situation because the fact of the matter is you didn't, all right? Um, or you're not. You know, you've got this imaginary standard of what good looks like and then you keep comparing it yourself to it and just can you drive yourself in state insane. So what I recommend is like you just say to yourself, I have an effective sales process. Okay, and I am committed to getting better at one percent better each week, because once you do have a prospecting process, once you do have a discovery process, once you do have an objection handling process, which is you take the time to do it, you have like the, the the whole spectrum, the whole gamut, from going start to finish. Okay, and like there's no reason why now that you've got that in place, why you just can't, you haven't got the facility just to get one percent better each week. So calm your ass down, don't stress yourself out. All right, because that's not going to give you any benefit at all. It's just going to throw yourself under the bus. So, like, this is the process I have. Okay, it's not perfect, but it never will be. But what I can do is I can make it, like, 1% better. All right. So, like, only you can tell yourself, like, ask yourself, what are the things you say to yourself that, that throw yourself under the bus? Like, and you just need to switch on to that and just, like, give yourself a bit of a talking to. Okay. Um, if you feel like there's an internal state of anxiety, frustration, that's a clue that you're kind of um, you're taking too much ownership of parts of the script or parts of the sales process or, or, or client acquisition process or customer's acquisition process that's not within your control. You need to just be very mindful of like this of what your process is, right? I prospect, 
Um, I take them through a discovery. I ask for the order and the objection handling. Okay. And if you're getting involved in fulfillment or you get involved in the marketing and like it's cracking you up because there's other people doing things that you think like they shouldn't or not doing as well as they can, leave it. Okay. You just only focus on your process. And if the, the situation is so bad that you, you feel like you cannot make your goals or your, your, your financial or lifestyle goals from being in that environment, then you need to look elsewhere. And that's the long and short of it. All right. So, yeah, just a simple ma- mantra, guys. I have an effective sales process. I know what it is. I know what I don't need to get involved in. And I just use my discipline to create like a pragmatic system that allows me to get 1% better each week. Okay, guys, bit of a long post uh, uh, presentation, but I think it's very useful. It's just down to you now, guys, to implement it and be consistent with it.